and the UCLA Bruins. Volleyball on the deuce, of course. Hi again, everybody, and welcome. I'm Chris Marlowe. This will be the second meeting of the year between these two teams. They met back in September. Penn State won a tight-fisted thriller, three games to one. However, this is the one that counts, the one that could propel one of these teams to the national championship. Happy to have working with me once again, Maria Barnes. Both teams expected to get here, but they took different paths. Absolutely, they sure did. Penn State had a tough region, the mid -East regional. They had to get by top 10 ranks, Notre Dame. Then they had to beat Nebraska, undefeated, number one team ra ranked team in the country, at home in front of a sellout crowd, and they did it in four games. UCLA, on the other hand, sent to the south, skated through. They haven't had a tough match since, I think, before Thanksgiving. Let's take a closer look at this UCLA team. Of course, the Bruins are led by one of the great outside hitters in the country, Annette Buckner. But we're going to feature tonight the other woman, the other outside hitter, Jenny Johnson, who could be the key. She really could. She's only a 200 hitter, and you say, well, what's she doing in UCLA's lineup? But they couldn't win without her. She is a great defensive player. She's one of the best passers in the country. They need her to have a great night. Similar situation at Penn State. The number one setter on the Nittany Lions is Salima Davidson. She is great. We'll talk about her a lot. But Jen Reimers, a basketball player, volleyball player, outside hitter, if she's on, Penn State could win this one. Obviously, she's an all-around athlete, and she is their big match player. She hit 358 last year in the NCAA championship against Long Beach State. She had over 25 kills. Penn State needs for her to play like that once again. Two of the outstanding coaches in the country in this one, Andy Banikowski of UCLA, Russ Rose from Penn State. A little earlier, we asked both coaches, what's it going to take? Well, since we played Penn State, uh, in early September. I think we've grown up a lot. Uh, we've had a whole season now, and uh, you have to say that our, our freshman, uh, Kara Milling, is a lot more experienced. Uh, our setting is more solidified with Kelly Flanagan being our, our starter, and uh, she's more comfortable running our offense, and I think we've become a little bit more uh, diversified with our offense uh, than we were early in the year. Uh, our middle attack is a little better than it was the last time we played. And, you know, they were going through a situation where they were trying to determine who was going to be their starting setter. So, you know, uh, Andy was going with both setters in that match, and he's clearly made a decision on, on who he wants to play. So I think both teams have improved in uh, a few areas. And, you know, they were, they were at Nebraska last week watching us play, so they'll have a pretty fresh scouting report. And, uh, you know, that's an advantage they have, and we'll have to make some adjustments as the match goes along. Both Penn State and UCLA have come a long way since their first meeting this year on September 9th. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for the Penn State Lady Lions, Salima Davidson is the setter. Jen Reimers is outside. Terry Zemitis is inside at one of the middle blocking spots. Laura Cook is outside. Zainab Tom is on the right side. And Sunday Lamoro is the other middle blocker. Meanwhile, UCLA Johnson and Buckner are outside. Randick and Krull in the middle. Flanagan is the setter. Kara Milling, the freshman, is on the right side. Andy Banikowski is the head coach for UCLA. He is in his 28th season. Russ Rose in his 16th year. Uh, recognized as two of the top coaches in the country. So here we go. UCLA will serve first. And right off the bat, the ball is drilled down the line by Jen Reimers. She led the Big Ten in kills last year. She's had a great year this year for Penn State, coming off an injury early on in the season. UCLA and White, they'll set left side, and Buckner hits it out down the line. Penn State on the board, leading one to nothing. You'll notice right away, Chris, Penn State will leave that line shot open. They will show line against UCLA and force them to hit that line. Kim Crow will serve it up. Crow wearing number eight, a sophomore from Decatur, Indiana. But a good pass by Penn State. Davidson back set. And UCLA can score a point. Not yet. Penn State, a very good defensive team. Interestingly, Penn State, in the same number of matches and games this year, has 250, make that 500 more digs than UCLA. So the longer the rally goes, we figure the better for Penn State. UCLA trying to terminate. Meanwhile, Reimers and Kroll digs it up. 
Best three out of five. Davidson, quick set. And UCLA pops it up. Buckner wow. rejected. <laughs> what a rally. So David Davidson gets up and over quickly there and uh, ends the rally for Penn State. Good heads up play by Salima Davidson here. Great defense on both sides of the net. Yeah. Over to Buckner, UCLA's leading hitter, and she is blocked. Give the block to Sunday Lamoro. Lamoro, number 14, the woman who led the Big Ten in blocking the last three years in a row. Two to nothing, Penn State. And UCLA a little shaky early. Play action pass. Trying to dump it was Davidson. Davidson had 10 kills of the dump variety against Nebraska, and UCLA had that well scouted. Yes, they had the opportunity to see Penn State play Nebraska. The whole UCLA scouting squad was there at the uh, Mideast Regional Final, so they're well prepared. Buckner, and it's dug up in the backcourt by Zemitis. And down the hatch, number six, Laura Cook, the 5'10 senior from Baltimore, gets on the board. There's Lamoureux with the serve. And into the middle, Kelly Flanagan sets Allison Randick. Head coach Andy Banikowski says of Randick, you don't know what she's doing to you until she has done it. She is the silent assassin on the team. Silent but deadly, right? UCLA's into the net, and State will get the ball, give the kill to Zeynep Tan from Istanbul, Turkey. Her first, there's Tan. Penn State very, very experienced. Five returning starters from the NCAA runner-up team last year. Penn State leading two to nothing, looking for three. Not yet. Flanagan, and it's into the bottom of the net. Flanagan needs a little bit higher set than that. Flanagan, Flanagan needs to set a little bit higher set than that, I should say. Four hitting errors for UCLA as Penn State has jumped out three to nothing. Best three out of five game match. Here's Jenny Johnson, and she rockets it. Penn State, one of the best defensive teams in the country in terms of keeping the ball alive. Yeah, they are the best at just being, playing really scrappy, quick defense. They're not a tall team. They've got to win on D. Penn State's Zeynep Tan will have the ball. Three to nothing, Penn State leading. Chris Marlowe, Maria Barnes with you. National semifinal action. Don't call it the final four. It's not. It's the national semifinals. Final four means basketball. National semifinals, volleyball. Do not confuse the two. So here is Jenny Johnson, a junior from Newport Beach, California. 39 aces on the year. And she high floats. Davidson back set. Oh! What a block, Annette Buckner with the rejection, and UCLA has scored a point. Buckner's just standing there waiting for Zemitis to come and hit that slide. Very heads-up block there by Buckner. Little lofty serve. That one travels long. UCLA's first service error, and Penn State will have the ball. Penn State, the Big Ten runner-up under Russ Rose. The only loss is to Ohio State twice. And Chuck Irby's Michigan State team got him on the road. As that ball is dinked into the middle, the first kill for Nett Buckner. She needs 23 more to become the all-time season record holder at UCLA. That would break the record of Patty Orozco. Patty Orozco Dodd now. She married Mike Dodd. Of course, you know that if you're a volleyball fan. And State, another kill on the left. And it's 3-1. to one. inside and Annette Buckner is off to a slow start Buckner one of UCLA's most dependable players leads the team in kills digs aces and is second in about every other category Buckner and she's dug up beautifully by Zemitis and the ball put away through the block once again, Allison Randick comes up with a big hit for UCLA. She has the number one hitting percentage for UCLA this year. And there, she finds a way to find the corner. Here's Johnson over to Buckner. 
And Buckner hits it high out of bounds. So another, hit, another hitting error, the fifth for UCLA, as the Bruins are trailing four to one. Kara Milling, the freshman from Poway, California, puts it away her first. Had a terrific year for UCLA. I think the turnaround match for her was in that five-game match against Stanford, where UCLA beat Stanford, and Kara Milling had a career-high 23 kills. What a night for her. Really boosted her confidence as Zeynep Tan gets the kill. Penn State going to make its first substitution. 5'3", sophomore from Tampa, Florida. The smallest player in the NCAA semifinals. Lamoro, one of the tallest, goes out. There she is. And here is 5'3-inch Claudette Otero. Easy serve. Back set coming. And Milling pounds it down the line. Nice shot by Kara Milling, number 16. I'm, I am really amazed at Milling's range for being only a freshman. She's good at hitting the line and the cross-court shot. Davidson. And UCLA gets a block. Milling got the hands on it. Kroll was there, and UCLA gets a point. Penn State's doing a good job of mixing things up offensively, but UCLA's block has been great so far. Into the middle, little dink shot. Buckner pokes it up. And the put away in the middle, number six, standing there was Laura Cook, her second kill. Good heads up play by Laura Cook. Cook, uh, the best server statistically for Penn State with 36 aces. Got a tough floater. Johnson, pretty good pass into the middle. Milling, and she whacks it out of bounds. So UCLA racking up the hitting air. Seven now for UCLA, and Penn State is leading five to two. Cook again. This is game one, best three out of five game match. And Johnson, and the Bruins hit another ball out of bounds. It's six to two, and timeout taken by UCLA. So Penn State here in game one, out quickly. Lady Lions leading the Bruins by four. To discover the real difference between the world's two leading soft drinks, we're implementing an anthropological study. Chimp A will be allowed nothing but Coke. Chimp B, nothing but Pepsi. The results are astounding. The chimp that drank Coke showed improvement in motor skills. The chimp that drank Pepsi, however, disappeared. Hello? It's him! <laughs> Sure Solid has the most effective wetness fighting ingredient you can buy, so you can be sure to be dry. You can't be sure you can meet the demand. You can't be sure about where you land. You can be sure you can raise your hand. You can be sure to be dry. You can be sure to be dry. This holiday season, while you're shopping, we'll be dropping a ton of money in the Discover Card Big Payback. Now, every time you use your card, you're automatically entered in our holiday sweepstakes. The more you shop, the more chances you have to win. Weekly bonus prizes of $50,000 or land the ultimate $1 million grant prize. It pays to discover. The card with the big payback. Only those with superhuman ability may enter my court. I got that. Chris Marlowe and Maria Barnes back in Austin, Texas, home of the Texas Longhorns, coached by McHaley. Longhorns didn't make it here this year, but they will be a factor next year. Penn State has scored seven unanswered points as the Nittany Lions, or Lady Lions, if you like, are bombing UCLA 11 to 2. Gated this play is a tough serve. Kara Milling passes the ball over the net. 
can't do that when you've got Terry Zemitis up there. UCLA having trouble passing the ball, and that doesn't make it easier for the freshman setter, Kelly Flanagan. Quick set into the middle, and it is rejected. I'm not even sure that one went over the net. No, that set was way too low for Kroll to hit over the net. You see here, Flanagan tries to get the ball to Kroll, but the set has got to be higher. Andy Banikowski puts in Michelle Mooney, the 6'2 junior from El Toro, trying to break the momentum. He takes out Milling. Penn State by 10. Back set. Here comes Johnson. Oh, what a dig by Zaynet Tom. Oh. But Penn State touched the net. One key for UCLA that I want to talk about, Maria. UCLA has a freshman setter, Kelly Flanagan. She's played marvelously this year, but going to She's be a, a factor <laughs> as number two checks in. Kim Coleman has come in. So Coleman into the lineup, and Flanagan has gone out. So just as we're talking about that, the comparison between the freshman setters for UCLA and the experienced senior All-American for Penn State, Salima Davidson. Well, Kelly Flanagan's a sophomore, but this is her first year setting. She had to wait until All-American Julie Bremner left the UCLA squad to get her chance. Salima Davidson, on the other hand, has been at Penn State for five years. She is a redshirt senior. She is one of the best at running an offense. And you can see she's also an accomplished blocker. She got a right hand over, closed off the net here. Great reach by Salima Davidson. 13 to two, as Andy Banikowski's Bruins are being blasted. Nice outside set. They say of Coleman, she sets a nice outside ball. She doesn't set the quick as well as Flanagan. And the first error for Penn State, Jen Reimers, hits it out of bounds. Hitting errors, UCLA, that won't get it done. 13 hitting errors, Penn State just four. If you just joined us, this is game one. National semifinals, Penn State, UCLA. Winner advances, loser goes home. Is that ball poked out of bounds? And UCLA will have it. The Bruins, the Pac-10 runner-up. UCLA, the only team to defeat Stanford this year. The Bruins did it 3-2 to two on November 4th. And the Bruins have been played well, been playing well. However, they look awful here in game one. Maybe Penn State looks great. It's hard to, hard to tell. Uh, UCLA is obviously not playing good ball for them. And Penn State is tearing them up. Well, they're just playing defense. That's the most important aspect of their game. They're digging everything. They're hitting smart. You can see here, this isn't a terminating hit, just a smart use of the block. 13 to three, Reimers with the serve. Penn State doing a nice job at the net. Sandy Lamoureux, last year, she did a great job against Long Beach State. Setting definitely hurting UCLA right now. There just is no chemistry between the hitters and the setters at this point in the match for UCLA. They're not passing that great either, which makes the setter's job even tougher. So they're stinking it up is what you're saying at Absolutely. the moment. UCLA shanking it. And a free ball milling back in. Penn State going for the throat right here. Left side. Not yet. Coleman pumps it up. Nice play. Over to Buckner. And Buckner hits it five yards out of bounds. And again, Buckner needs a higher step than that. What an impressive win by the Penn State Nittany Lions. The Big Ten runners up. And they win game one. 15 to 3. Russ Rose in command, and we'll continue with our coverage of NCAA women's volleyball here on ESP. Imagine the strength of a diesel locomotive forcing up a grade in Leadville, Colorado, a steam engine slowing for water in Cheyenne, Wyoming, or simply around your family room. And the fun and excitement starts at your local hobby shop. He has a complete selection of electric trains and accessories for the beginner to advanced model railroader. So stop dreaming, because there's nothing like the power of a train. Hi, happy holidays. I'm Nicole, and I bring satellite television down to Earth with Prime Star. To me, the holidays mean sharing and caring with family and friends. So happy holidays from all of us here at TCI. Hi, my name is Paul Deering. I'm a technician at TCI, and to me, the best part of Christmas is decorating a Christmas tree and listening to Christmas carols with my wife and son. When you're born, the curtain opens, air smacks your face, you're on, and hopefully, you will. No rehearsals, no going back. 
back in Austin, Texas. Penn State winning game one, 15 to three. A little earlier tonight, we had a chance to speak to the two stars of UCLA and Penn State. Salima Davidson for the Nittany Lions, Annette Buckner for the Bruins. We asked both players about this match. Tonight, uh, in order to beat UCLA, I think we have to ball handle well and play good defense. Um, the keys, of course, are, you know, neutralizing um, either Kim Krull, Krull or Annette Buckner. Um, I really don't feel pressure right now because, I mean, we're doing a lot of different things now with, with our offense. We're mixing up our attack a lot more. So, I mean, I don't think the pressure is really on me. Um, I mean, I just need to do my, do my part. UCLA has definitely worked on diversifying their offense, which has helped them a lot, but they still need Buckner to play better than she played in game one. Buckner with one kill and six hitting errors. So indeed, Russ Rose and Penn State, they have neutralized number 17, one of UCLA's greatest players ever. At least they did it in game one. Bruins a pretty loose bunch. You would expect them to bounce back in game two. I would expect Flanagan to come back in. Let's see. No, they're going to start Kim Coleman in game two. I am really surprised. Kim Coleman's a very good setter, the 6'1 freshman from Newport Beach, and she is going to get the start for the other freshman, Kelly Flanagan. Chris, what do you think of that move? Well, I think Andy's frustrated. He needs to make a change in his lineup. He doesn't have any options. He's only got eight players. His only subs are Setter and uh, Michelle Mooney, who we also saw. Yeah, but I don't bring her match. in now. You see how they pass so poorly. I, I'm not, I, I don't agree with it either. I'm not sure you can You've all. You've had Flanagan in yeah. there for 60% of the season. You leave her in there. Kelly Flanagan had started 29 matches in a row, and there is Kim Coleman. What a spot for the freshman. She's been in 23 matches, 46 games. That's not a lot. We'll see how she responds. She sets a nice high ball, and UCLA needs that to get Buckner involved. This is game two. Penn State won the first. Chris Marlowe, Maria Barnes from Austin, Texas. And the ball is put away by Buckner. You know, we talked about the strength of Kim Coleman. She does a better job of moving things around. She's a little more assertive, and she has a nicer touch than Flanagan. But I agree with you, Chris. You leave Flanagan in there. She is what the team is used to. Of course, we're not the coach, and we don't know if something's wrong with Flanagan. Maybe she's got a, a slight injury, sure. but... Uh, Andy Banikowski, he's won more games and more matches than any volleyball coach in women's history, so. Not a coach to question. No, he should know more than Marlowe and Barnes combined, I would think. UCLA with the serve. Penn State winning game one easily. The Bruins have their first lead of the night. Left side, Reimers off the top. Davidson. Quick set left side and the put away. Jen Reimers with her seventh kill. In the offseason of volleyball, she plays on the Nittany Lion basketball team, so she's a tremendous athlete. She'll join them as soon as this weekend is over. They're off to a 5-1 start. Ball shanked out of bounds. Penn State gets its first point. Russ Rose talked about how important it was for his squad to serve tough coming into this match the only way to take UCLA out of their offense, and that's exactly what the Lions have done. Coleman tries to dish it over. Zemitis hoping for a call, didn't get it. They whip it to Reimers, and Penn State has another chance to take the lead. Reimers rejected by number five, six foot three inch senior Allison Randick. Allison Randick, such a big blocker. See the NCAA semifinal game one winner, 21 of 26 matches over time. And UCLA cannot bring it over. So Penn State gets the side out. Let's give you that one more time in a different way. Penn State 29-0 this year when it wins game one. UCLA is just 7-2 when it loses game one. So the odds favoring Penn State right now. High set Buckner. I tell you, Buckner doesn't play better. UCLA has no chance to come back in this one. I've never seen Annette Buckner play this poorly. Just seems really out of sync. Off to a slow start, we would say that. Buckner averaging about five or six kills a game. She's got two so far. Buckner off speed, nice shot. 
Penn State has been serving so well that UCLA just has not been able to get into any sort of passing rhythm. We've talked about how important that is for them, given that they do have young setters. Two to one, Penn State. Back set, coming around the horn, Sandy Lamoro. Remember last year she was just a blocker, but she has really improved her offensive game and having a big year for the Lady Lions. Now Davidson will serve. Coleman back set and milling. Oh, Davidson, fabulous dig. Ton dishes it. UCLA goes and gets it. Lady Lions on the attack. Left side, Cook. Oh, fabulous dig by Buckner. Right back. Lamoro puts it away. Smart play by Lamoro. She saw the big donut in the middle of the court. UCLA's perimeter defense not able to pick that up. So here is Salima Davidson. Great leadership for the Lady Lions. And Milling cranks it down cross court. Her third kill. And Allison Randick will serve. Allison Randick, a big Grateful Dead fan. I was told that she went to 25 or 30 Grateful Dead concerts during the summer. She and Bill Walton must be at every, uh, every show by the dead. And she put that one uh, right on the line. Three to two is our score. Penn State is ahead, and UCLA ties it up. An unusual shank for Penn State. Their ball control has been flawless so far in this match. Here's Randick again, a senior from Lafayette, California. And Bruins can take the lead. Milling, she's got a sweet pair of hands, sets left. Johnson, got it. Jenny Johnson. The great set by Milling. She goes high outside to Johnson. Johnson does a good job there finding the hole. Substitution. Angie Kammer, number 10, is going to come in. A 5'10 sophomore from Muncie, Indiana. And going out is number six, Laura Cook. Cook has had injury problems her entire career, three knee injuries, so it's not surprising to see another player come in for her as UCLA gets the block and a point. Well, Cook was struggling a little bit with passing, so they brought Kammer in to try to get a good pass up to their setter. UCLA five, Penn State three. Penn State won the first game 15 to three. Now another substitution, Claudette Otero comes back in. You remember, she was a key last year in the NCAA final when she dug in the most memorable rally of the year, a fantastic point blank dig that uh, gave Penn State uh, some impetus to win. I think it was game four, wasn't it, Sunday? Game four turned it around for Penn State. Ton off the block, out of bounds. Just barely hit a blocker, but give the point to the Lady Lions. Dana Ton, a very crafty, left-handed hitter for Penn State. She's not one to put the ball to the floor. She'll use a block. She'll find holes. So the service error for the Nittany Lions. Now coming back will be Laura Cook. And going out is Terry Zamitis. So a strategic substitution as the more powerful Cook comes back in. Beautiful up by Kara Milling. Set left, Johnson. She dinks and scores. A little off speed for Jenny Johnson. UCLA gets a point. Smart play by Johnson. She saw the hole. You'll notice Penn State plays defense for the most part around the outside of the court. Jenny Johnson just goes up with a sharp, smart shot and hits the donut in the middle of the court. Penn State leading the match. One game to none. Milling, one of the top recruits in the country last year. Inside, poked up and out of reach. The quick set, Terry Zamitis, hit 483 against Nebraska, 482 against Notre Dame in two regional matches as Cook serves. Buckner. Buckner starting to get a little steam on her hits. Zamitis. That's trouble. That's tight. Oh, Johnson, nice tool shot off the end of the block. I'll tell you, Johnson handled that very well. Coleman set her really tight. She had a double block up there. She just goes up and tools the outside hand of Tom. Great pass. Davidson back set to Tom. And UCLA got a free ball coming. A little slap shot by Coleman. And Penn State touched. Nope, they went under the net. Can't do that. Let's give you the officials in case they become involved. Michael Blaylock is our first referee. Tana Martin, our second referee. There's Tana. She's watching the unders. 
Seven to four, UCLA. Do you get the feeling UCLA is getting a little momentum or not? Yeah, I do. I mean, they've, they've started to play with a little bit of rhythm. They're running their offense. Penn State is, you know, still holding their own, but maybe their ball control is suffering a little bit right now. We talked about Jen Reimers being the key. She has nine kills so far to lead Penn State. There she is again. UCLA, Coleman sets the middle and puts it away. Coleman to crawl. They say that's the weakness of Coleman, that she doesn't set the quick that well, but she looked pretty good on that one. Yeah, she did. That was a good connection with Kroll. Here is Kim Kroll. Another perfect pass by Penn State. And the block, Coleman up high. Does any team in the country have two 6-1 big setters like UCLA? No, it really is amazing, and they're both so young. That's just a great block. So often in women's collegiate volleyball, the setter is a blocking weakness. Not true for UCLA. Timeout call. Penn State one game one, 15-3. However, UCLA has turned it around a bit here in game two. The Bruins are up by four. My son says I spoil the grandkids, especially at Christmas. Sure, I've been going to Burger King to get him all those great Disney glasses. But I didn't get him every glass. There's still a Lion King. And the movie's back in theaters now. So I had to get him this one, too. It's just 89 cents. And it's only at Burger King with any Whopper value meal. Okay, so I spoil him a little. I'm a grandma. That's my job. Burger King, get your burgers worth. Where is he? When you just gotta get away from it all. Go role-playing at Super Adventure Island 2, where you gotta get back your memory and your lovely, yet confused, ride. A new set of academic standards will go into effect in 1995. To practice, play, or receive an athletic scholarship, freshmen will need a minimum grade point average in at least 13 core courses in high school and a minimum score on the SAT or ACT. Make it a point to talk to your coach or guidance counselor about these requirements. Prepare yourself now. It's never too early to hit the books. This message provided by the NCAA. It is a book of memories, a book of accomplishments, a book of pride. To receive your copy of the official 1994 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship Souvenir Program, send a check or money order for $7 to Programs, Post Communications, 546 East Main Street, Lexington, Kentucky, 40506. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. This message provided by the NCAA. Chris Marlowe and Maria Barnes back at the Frank Irwin Center, a beautiful place to play volleyball here in Austin, Texas. Penn State and UCLA in the national semifinals. This is semifinal number one. You see Andy Vanikowski and UCLA have dominated in terms of final fours. UCLA six national championships. Penn State runner-up last year. But if you're talking statistically, these, in terms of wins, these are the two top programs in the country, calling, according to Volleyball Monthly magazine, in the last six years in terms of wins and losses. And they're matched up here in the semifinal. UCLA on a six to nothing run, leading 11 to four. Penn State's gone dead in the water here. UCLA coming on. And the key for UCLA has been the insertion of their backup setter, Kim Coleman. Didn't think much of the move at the moment, or at that time, but it has worked out very well for Andy Banikowski. He put in Kim Coleman for Kelly Flanagan, and it worked. Well, she's doing a good job of keeping the offense very simple. She's just setting a lot of high outside sets because the chemistry just was not there with the middle hitters. They were not connecting. She's kind of slowed things down until UCLA can get warmed up. Little Dink gets into the net, and it is a point for UCLA now 13 to 4. Milling. Substitution for Penn State. Claudette Otero is back in. And going to the bench is Sandy Lamoureux. Johnson again. Jenny Johnson doing a nice job of tooling the outside blocker of Penn State. She really is. She went up here. She saw the block there. She hit high off their hands. 
pulled Terry the minus right out of bounds. UCLA first game point. This could be it right here. And trying to hit the ball over on two, Kim Crawl got a little bit anxious there. Kara Melling was doing a great job of serving that short serve. She got them those few points there. Coleman, high set, Johnson. And you can see Johnson likes those high, loopy yeah, sets, as you said. really does. She likes to just hang out there and wait. The big difference for UCLA in this match has been the fact that they've only had one hitting error to, what was it, 13 in the first game. So they have really steadied out. And again, Kim Coleman has done a good job. She has come in, slowed things down offensively, but set well. Penn State trying to hang on. It's second game point. Coleman set high left. Here comes Buckner. And she puts it away. So UCLA wins game two, 15-4. I'll tell you, both Buckner and Johnson do a great job of those high outside sets. They both hang for a long time. Both have great vertical jumps and are able to beat that Penn State block. Buckner puts it away. Penn State winning game one, UCLA game two. We're tied one game apiece. We'll continue more action on ESPN after this. The beach can kill your hair. The sun, the wind, the sand, they really dry it out. That's why I use Per Plus Dry Damaged. It's extra conditioning without the fuss. That's because it has two conditioners. One conditions all over. The second goes straight to the damaged spots for soft, manageable hair. The beach is hard on your hair. But nobody has to know. Her plush shampoo and conditioner in one. Great hair, no fuss. Back in Austin, Texas, national semifinal number one. We are tied one game apiece, Penn State and UCLA. Well, it took Andy Banikowski about midway through game one to make a very, very important decision to take out his number one setter and to put in his backup setter. I thought that took a lot of courage. A decision that we doubted, which yeah. ended up being a good thing for them. I just think that Kim Coleman did a better job of setting UCLA's offense. I think Flanagan was trying to be too tricky. Big difference for UCLA. Both their outside hitters just started cranking away. Buckner obviously warmed up. That helped things quite a bit. Game one, all Penn State. Game two, all UCLA. Let's take a look at the match summary through two games. Kills very even, but UCLA really came on in blocks, especially in game two. You know, they really did. Their right side blockers were doing a great job of stopping Penn State's attack. Hitting errors, UCLA still leading in that category. Aces and errors, not really much of a factor. What was a big factor, Chris, however, was that UCLA started winning rallies. A rally is qualified as if the ball goes over the net two or more times, and the, the score is UCLA 13, Penn State 12. So UCLA started playing great in the longer rallies, not something they're known for, something that Penn State relies on. UCLA needs to serve to start game three. Here we go, start of game three. Penn State smoked UCLA in game one. Bruins returning the favor in game two. As Annette Buckner, described by Andy Banikowski, is the best left side blocker we've ever had at UCLA. And there you can see why. Look at that great solo block going up against Terry Zemito, who's 6-2. Coleman setting high left. And Buckner gets a touch. 
And UCLA gets off to a quick start, two to nothing. Annette Buckner with that 28 and a half inch vertical jump can really hang in the air. Set the quick, Penn State digs it up. Penn State unable to rally in game two. UCLA able to terminate. Buckner gets it back. And she turns it out of bounds. Wow, she's had a lot of hitting errors. That's her ninth hitting error at the start of game three. Chris Marlowe and Maria Barnes with you from Austin, Texas. Nice crowd on hand, knowledgeable volleyball fans in this area. Jen Reimers, who was hot early, and whip it over to Crawl. Crawl is a termination player, either out or in. Andy Benikowski says she's got a little Liz Masakayan in her in terms of going for it. That's not so bad. Nope. Yeah, he says she either ends rallies for us or against us. Pat Powers used to be a lot like that, yes, the former right. men's Olympic star before he came into his own. As Penn State gets a point, we are tied 2-2. Game three, best three out of five. Here's Terry Zemitis. Buckner. Great dig. Boy, Laura Cook can play defense. There she is again, Zemitis. She got it. And Davidson pumps it over. See if Penn State can score out of there. Oh, no. They call double contact on the set. It looks as if Davidson's hands may have been a little sweaty there. Unusual for her to get a double hit call, but look at this great save by Penn State. Zaynep Ton just goes over there, one hands it up, and, and Davidson keeps it in play. Give good credit, too, to Terry Zemitis, who poked up the second part of that play. It was Ton to Zemitis to Cook. They were all in on it. Yeah. Davidson thinking, why did that ball go through my hands? <laughs> what happened? 2-2 two -two our score. UCLA cannot bring it back over. And Penn State gets a point. Three to two, the Penn State Lady Lions leading UCLA. We're tied at one game apiece. And a substitution coming in. First time we're going to see Heidi Rottinghaus, 5'8 defensive specialist, sophomore from Columbus, Indiana. She'll serve it up. Good serve, deep. And Johnson hits it out of bounds. When Johnson gets in a hitting spell, and a bad spell, she hits a lot of balls out of bounds. So there's a lot of responsibility for the UCLA squad. She has free reign to pass whatever ball she wants. Milling, off speed, Penn State gobbles it up. Davidson, quick set. Zemitis, off speed, just a bit. So the freshman, Terry Zemitis, and Andy Banikowski has to take time out. Hitting errors plaguing UCLA in game three. Five of them so far. We'll take time out. One game apiece. And Penn State up by three here in game three. Don't go away. Good afternoon, Oakland and San Francisco. Today, the Iceman cooketh Tim Hardaway's chocolate chip cookies. These cookies cook up just like Timmy's game. Quick. Timmy's crossover is a thing of beauty. He'll roll you to sleep. You know, so he'll cross over on you. <laughs> he going that way, defense are going that way. You know, every oh. time you start talking about basketball, see what happens? And I got oh. to talk about the hoop. Now, see, now we got to do a whole nother best oh, for the team. Man, I don't want Timmy to see that. Oh, God, see, Tim's going to be mad at me. So, what do you think? You look tough to me. You just don't see that these days. I'm impressed. I want those qualities on our team. You think we can get them? Let's go ask. Hey, that's Elliot's head scout. Could you come over here a second, son? Yeah, you. Is it show, baby? Could you turn around? You know if these sweats come in teal? Is that seam double-stitched? Do you like the way it flows? Looking for tough athletic wear? Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Flexible. Flexible. The all-new Subaru Legacy. Some say it looks best in red. Others say in green. But perhaps it's best seen in white. Subaru All-Wheel Drive is the ultimate safety feature. It transfers power automatically from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip. So any sliding you do is strictly by choice. 
the all-weather, all-road, all-wheel drive Subaru Legacy. The beauty of all-wheel drive. East of the Texas Hill Country in Austin, there's a place that just won't let you go home hungry. It's called Threat Guilds. And here you might find yourself behind a great big chicken fried steak, a mountain of red beans and rice, or even a microphone. So if you go, bring your appetite for a good time and your visa card. Because Threat Guilds might let you take the stage, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Chris Marlowe, Maria Barnes, back in Austin, Texas. We've got a great one going. Tied one game apiece. UCLA up by one here in game three, 10-9. And what a run they have made coming back in this match. UCLA's really steadied out. Number Penn State in blue, UCLA in white. As the Bruins will serve the number one seed in the South region, Penn State the number one seed in the Mideast. Three of the four top seeds made it here to the national semifinals. So the NCAA doing a great job of seeding this year. The only team that did not make it, the number one team in the nation, Nebraska, which was put out by Penn State. Of course, next year, the NCAA going to a more national seeding kind of uh, format. Eight teams will be seated nationally. I think that will be good considering women's volleyball has made such progress. Yeah, I think uh, you'll hear a lot less complaints next year. Ball hit into the net and UCLA gets another point. UCLA now leading 12 to 9. Six point run for UCLA. Flanagan with the serve. Davidson back set and a stuff block. Jody Nicewinder, who had come into the game, the sophomore from Fort Collins. And a big stuff by Allison Randick. Flanagan serving hard. Penn State in trouble here after leading 8-4. High set, Randick. Oh, and she's over the top and down. Penn you talked at the beginning about how Alice and Randick's one of those players who uh, you don't really notice throughout the match, but statistically, once it's over, you can see the impact that she has made. Angie Kammer, the hard hitter from Muncie, Indiana, comes in. UCLA outscoring Penn State 10 to 1. Flanagan. This is game point. And that's it. Kara Milling, the freshman, taking control at the net. Game three to the Bruins, 15, nine. We've talked about how UCLA's offense has diversified. They have Buckner and Johnson on the outside, but the player that has really come on for them this year, Kara Milling, you can see her pound one to the floor there. UCLA is in command. The Bruins are up two games to one. More women's volleyball on ESPN after this. Ryder Auto and Ryder Motors want to send you and a friend to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. The grand prize Rose Bowl trip includes round-trip airfare for two from Philadelphia to Los Angeles, three-night deluxe accommodations, four-day car rental, two one-day passes to Universal Studios, reserved seating at the Tournament of Roses Parade, and two Rose Bowl tickets. It's easy to enter. Just stop into Ryder Auto in State College or Ryder Motors in Phillipsburg and register to win. The drawing is December 22nd, so hurry in now. And while you're at Ryder Auto, check out the great deals on the 94 Mazda Protégé, the 1994 Mazda B4000 Cam Plus, the 1994 Mazda 626, and the 1995 Mazda Protégé. Hot cars, great deals, and a trip to the Rose Bowl only at Ryder Auto, 1703 West College Avenue, State College, at Ryder Motors, Route 322 East in Phillipsburg. Chris Marlowe and Maria Barnes, the Plank Frank Irwin Center here in Austin, Texas, home of the Texas Longhorns. UCLA leading the match at two games to one. The key, obviously, is blocking. You can see UCLA 12 blocks to only five of Penn State. But both coaches said coming into this match that Penn State needed the ball to stay in the deep court. They needed to win with defense, digging defense, not blocking defense. Hitting errors, still UCLA with 25 hitting errors, still not playing real well. And service errors, Penn State has six, 
to only UCLA's three. So Penn State will serve first. Russ Rose has flip-flopped his lineup. He's going to start with Claudette Otero serving. So he's rotated around three positions, and we'll see how this affects the matchups. Sometimes coaches will do this. Double contact on Flanagan, one to nothing. Trying to get a little different look. Get your hitters against different blockers. Maybe have your defensive players digging against different people. So Russ God, Rose forced to make the change. Right. Otero serving. And through the block, Kim Kroll rams another one. Eight Kim kills Kroll. for Kroll. She is UCLA's most vocal and liveliest player. She's really quick and athletic. Pretty good pass there. Davidson, X play. And over the top, Laura Cook. Laura Cook leads the team in aces, kills, digs, a fine all-around player. And she will serve. Nice pass. Set left, it's low, and Buckner can't hit it. Over to Tan. She dinks and scores. You said she was a smart volleyball player. Five semesters, she's never gotten lower than an A minus, and only two of those. And her major is civil engineering. She's got a 3.97. Good spike there. What's the difference between engineering and civil engineering? Well, civil engineering. Civil. A little more cordial. A cordial kind of a major. All right. Here is Kelly More Flanagan. Technical, I believe. Okay. Set left. Reimers dug up by Kroll, who's turned into a very good defensive player. And Milling is rejected. Remember back in game one, Penn State blocked beautifully, but they have not been blocking in games two and three. No, they haven't. And a lot of that had to do with the stats were lower for Penn State. For UCLA, Penn State was more successful blocking with high outside lofting sets that are tougher for them to block. Told by our stat man Michael Sondheimer that Penn State just got its first block in the last two games. They had five in game one. Penn State gets a point. Nittany Lions, one of five teams that have appeared in all 14 NCAA championships. Of course, UCLA is one of the other ones, Pacific, UC Santa Barbara, and Stanford. Here's Annette Buckner. Shank pass, ace. Wow, that is the easiest serve for an ace you will ever see. She served up a lollipop, and Penn State could not handle it. Laura Cook just took her eyes off the ball. Davidson, back set, and Zemitis puts it away. I think Terry Zemitis needs to be a little more involved. Her seventh kill. She's a great athlete. When she comes on strong, watch out. She holds the, the state record in the state of Illinois for kills at the high school level. Flanagan chasing. UCLA pokes it up. And Johnson pokes it over. 3-1 to one Penn State. Game four. And the put away. Jen Reimers. So Reimers thunders that ball through. And it's 4-1. to one. She only came into this match hitting 272, but she is a big match player, as we've mentioned several times tonight. Not unusual for her to elevate against a good team. That's Zemitis in the back line. A future star. Randick with the serve. And double contact. Salima Davidson getting called for the, the double or the throw, if you like the common vernacular. You can see her looking over at her coach going, what is up with that call? I did not agree with it at all. Davidson, there's the back set, and Lamoro puts it away. So Sandy Lamoro going high off the set of Davidson. Quick set. Penn State all over it. Into the middle, oh, and the ball put away. Zemitis. Terry Zemitis. So being only a freshman, she sure has good chemistry with her setter. She and Salima Davidson connect quite often. Look out for Zemitis. She's blocked. Can she pull it out of the net? No. Flanagan. Kelly Flanagan, the sophomore from Tampa, Florida, did a beautiful job, and Zemitis may be hurt. Looks as if she possibly twisted her ankle. 
So Terry Zemitis, the freshman uh, shaken up on the play. What a recruit she was for Penn State. The Chicago Athlete of the Year, male or female, the Illinois record holder for kills. She was a first team USA Today basketball All-American. And she is down now. Hmm. Maybe she just went down on the floor really hard. Or in an awkward way. Like they were checking it to see if it popped out at all. Penn State is uh, not a very deep team in terms of middle blockers. They have not yeah. played their other two middle blockers much this year because uh, Zemitis has been so spectacular. And of course, Lamoureux, you can't take her out. So she might have just tweaked her knee and maybe she can come back. The logical replacement is Jody Nicewender, the sophomore from Fort Collins, and she comes in number 13. So she has struggled a little bit this year, according to the coaches, and she has put into the match of her life. Jody <laughs> Nicewinder. They want her to be a mean winder now and block some balls. And Flanagan serves it into the bottom of the net. Zainab Todd goes back to serve. She has 30 aces on the season. Second best for the state squad. Pretty good pass by Kroll. They'll set left to Buckner, and Buckner has just had a cool night. She has just been not on her game. She only has 10 kills and eight hitting errors, and that has to concern UCLA head man Andy Benikowski. No, that does not bode well for UCLA, especially when you consider Buckner's the most experienced hitter on UCLA's team. She was in the 91 and 92 NCAA finals and the 93 regionals for UCLA. And it doesn't look like she is going to become the all-time season record holder at UCLA the way she's hitting right now Chris you know as well as I do she can get very hot at the end of a match however remember against Stanford she started off really slow yep and ended up with a career high of 37 right Jen Reimers has been carrying the load for Penn State Reimers with 16 kills Allison Randick gets her seventh kill Randick and leads the Pac-10 in hitting percentage it's 389, 16th in the nation. Kiefer Randick, she keeps the ball in play. Here's Johnson. And Johnson sneaks it through. So Lamoureux on the outside that time. Salima Davidson on the inside. And Johnson working on Davidson. Smart move. Russ Rose is doing a good job of mixing things up to try to counter UCLA's attack. So UCLA trailing Penn State here in game four, 6-3. Reimers reams one down the line, 17 kills for Jen Reimers. Flanagan, and a beautiful dig right back. Reimers, the Big Ten dig leader. Flanagan out of the back line to Buckner. Off speed, yes. That was a pretty good move by Flanagan. Did you see her adjust right at the last second? I thought it was going left. Nobody out there. Right back to Buckner. Good play by Kelly Flanagan, the setter, number seven. Really nice she got. She went, she saw there was no one out there to hit the outside hit. She went to Buckner in the back row. Go ahead, it's good, it's good. What a sky ball serve by Johnson. And Jenny Johnson runs it down. Goes over and drops. Jenny Johnson, the daughter of the gold medalist in 1960, Rafer Johnson. What a spectacular effort by JJ. Look at her all the way. You can see she inherited those genes. And double contact, and UCLA getting a boost of a couple of points. Six to five now. Let's give you the injury update on Terry Zamitis. She is walking very gin gingerly to the locker room, and it does not look good for her return. We'll try to keep you posted. Here's Flanagan. UCLA getting some momentum. Crawl. It terminates in the wrong way. Side out, Penn State. So substitutions coming in. Here comes Claudette Otero. Comes in for Sandy Lamoro. And here's Otero. Back set, crawl, blocked, poked. Randick can't get there. 
Good scouting by Penn State on that particular play. Carl trying to use the step out move and Russ Rose's uh, Nittany Lions were all over it. Otero serving. And she aces Claudette Otero. Great job served by Otero. And a timeout taken by UCLA. Bruins lead this match two games to one. We'll be back after this. Now, an oil made just for your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-roading. Extreme temperatures. Towing and hauling. They all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State. The intelligent oil for hard-working engines. Now, get up to a $1.89 mail-in rebate on a six-pack case of 4x4. So you buy five quarts and get one free. Important news was recently announced at a national sports medicine conference. A new study shows that for the sore muscles that occur the day after a strenuous workout, Advil provides superior relief to extra strength Tylenol. It's strong and fast. If you exercise regularly, you should know that more doctors recommend Advil than any other pain reliever for all types of muscle aches. For next day soreness, Advil just works better than Tylenol. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Face off. Interference. Board checking. Same rules, different league. Wednesday at 7.30, the AHL rules on ESPN2. How does the tuba player view volleyball? Yes, right behind the trumpet player. We've got a great one going at the national semifinals. Division one here in Austin, Texas. UCLA leads the match two games to one. However, Penn State has assumed command here in game four, 11 to five. I'm Chris Marlowe, my partner's Maria Barnes. We're trying to get to game five, at least Penn State is. There has never been a rally scoring game five in the national semifinals. And Penn State having a little communication problem there. UCLA will get the ball. Well, Salima Davidson dug that ball and there was no one stepping in to take control to set it. But you can see there the calm, as always, Russ Rose takes a lot to get his feathers ruffled. Davidson with the back set, Tan, and Tan hits it off the block, out of bounds, and she will serve. So, Zeynep Tan played at Uskadar High School in Istanbul, Turkey, and she will come out now, and a substitution is going to come in. Andrea Boner, 5'10", junior from Seven Valleys, Pennsylvania, to serve. Back set Coleman, milling, and a pretty nice dig. That was Boner. High set left, nicely done. And over the top, another defensive play. That was Cook and Otero. Coming this way, Nicewinder with the jam. Jody Nicewinder, number 13, lucky for Penn State. Both teams coming up with some big defensive plays, and Nicewinder, Probably one of the plays of her career there to end that rally. Here comes Buckner, and Buckner sizzles one cross court. Gotta 12 have, to 5. Got to have a block up against Annette Buckner. Russ Rose, third winningest percentage coach in NCAA history. Andy Benikowski, number two. Don Shaw of Stanford is number one. They're all very, very close as Penn State gets the side out. And they're all here. Substitutions coming in. Number 14, Sandy Lomero. So a very good rotation for Penn State. Quick set, off speed. Shovel it up to Davidson. UCLA can't get there. Penn State gets a point 13 to 5. UCLA feeling the pressure, breaking down with their ball control. Kelly Flanagan, number seven, going to return at the setting position. There she goes. And going out is Coleman. Of course, the key thing for Andy Banikowski, trying to figure out who to have in there at the right time. So far, he's done a beautiful job. Didn't work that time in game four. Johnson rockets one. Cross court. 
Throughout the first 11 matches of UCLA's season, Banikowski went back and forth between Flanagan and Coleman, and Flanagan had pretty much solidified the starting position and held it up until this match. Coaches talk about utilizing the entire bench, having a team. Lamoro and Lamoro off speed, puts it away. Here comes Claudette Otero. Last time she was in, Penn State got on a roll. Six to five, Penn State was leading. Now it's 13 to five. Flanagan and the put away to Kroll. So the Krollster puts one away. Good connection between Flanagan and Kroll on that play. Hit the ball off Julie Brenner last year. Had to make the adjustment. Here's a back set coming. Tan, did she get a touch? Yes, Zeynep Tan. Tan now with 11 kills. Very balanced of Penn State attack. Cook with the serve. That was a tough one. Set left, here comes Buckner. UCLA really needs Buckner to turn on. They need her to be spectacular in the next two games. It looks like there's going to be well, the end of this game and another game. Good shot. Jody Nicewender. She came in for the injured Terry Zamitis, who went out with a, appeared to be a gimpy knee, sprained knee maybe. It is game point for the Lady Lions. And into the block goes Buckner, her 13th kill. Buckner, very quiet, very unassuming superstar in the world of women's collegiate volleyball. Very easy going, too, but has not shaken her up at all, but she's not having a great night tonight. Reimers got in there quickly. Reimers got Penn State off to a great start. She has 19 kills. We said she might be the key, and she has been, at least for her team. She led her team in kills last year with 379 on the season. Came in this year with an injury and got off to a slow start, but it's come alive at the end of the season for Penn State. Third game point here for the Lady Lions. And they put it away. Nicewender has done a... Jody Nicewender. A killing the shoes of Terry Zemitis who went out with that bad knee. First ever game five rally scoring is coming up. Penn State and UCLA winner goes into the championship final. Loser goes home. Stay with us. Keeps my mind goofing off. My mom says it probably looks like some vegetable. But no plan could be so smart as to pick one machine that plays Sega Genesis and Sega CDs. That's the JVC XI. She could care. Put your mind to work, she says. I say XI comes with Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia. Hey, it's a CD player, plus you get stuff for free. So now let's see what you can do when you apply yourself. One mind, one machine. XI, multi-entertainment system. Call 1-800-JVC-XI. My son says I spoil the grandkids, especially at Christmas. Sure, I've been going to Burger King to get him all those great Disney glasses. But I didn't get him every glass. There's still a Lion King. And the movie's back in theaters now. So I had to get him this one, too. It's just 89 cents. And it's only at Burger King with any Whopper value meal. We are going all the way in Austin, Texas. National semifinal number one, Penn State and UCLA tied up two games apiece. Chris Marlowe, Maria Barnes. The match summary so far, UCLA's advantage is blocking Maria. Yes, but we have noticed in that last game, Penn State's block started to come alive. They need it to continue in game five if they want to beat UCLA. UCLA is still leading in the hitting errors category. They still have not steadied out offensively. Russ Rose and his Penn State team 0-1 in five game matches this year. Their loss to Michigan State. UCLA, meanwhile, 6-1. The Bruins only lost to Bill Neville's Washington Huskies. Rally scoring, of course, a point on every play. If you miss a serve, it's a point. If you hit it out of bounds, it's a point. If you get one in the face, it's a point. Which I'll tell you is somewhat of an advantage to Penn State because they play low air ball. Let's see. Allison Randick right off the bat. This is going to go fast. UCLA leads one to nothing. Both teams trying to get into the championship final against either Stanford or Ohio State. Buckner with the spinner. Ton rejected. Penn State brings it up. Ton. Flanagan. 
And milling for contacts. So Penn State gets a point. We're tied. You see, when Kara Milling goes up to hit this ball, she hits the ball into the net. That causes four hits for UCLA and a hitting error for Milling. Serving is Laura Cook. They whip it over to Nicewender. It got a spike on it, couldn't get it. Milling out of bounds. Point, Point Penn, State. Penn State. And again, Chris, Penn State is known for playing low error volleyball. This rally scoring, scoring could go to their favor. Give it over to Allison Randick. UCLA trying to do what its men's team could not do last May. UCLA and Penn State locked up in the men's NCAA final. Penn State winning the first ever volleyball championship for an Eastern team. In fact, a lot of people are calling Penn State the collegiate volleyball capital of the world. Little old State College, Pennsylvania. It's not even a beach there. Last year, Penn State, the national runners-up. Men's team won an NCAA title. Women's team in the national semifinals. Nobody's had a better record than that. If I were Kelly Flanagan, I'd keep the ball at Johnson and Randick. They've been the most consistent hitters for UCLA tonight. 3-3, rally scoring game five. Reimers, nice dig by Buckner. There comes Buckner. Right to Davidson, she tries to dump, and UCLA is there. Over to Johnson. She's been spectacular tonight. Jenny Johnson whacks it. Nice up by Cook. Whip it left side. Reimers, and she gets it. Jen Reimers with a mini slam dunk. Andy Manikowski saying, get over the net on Reimers. Gotta get over and close off the flat. Substitutions coming in. Sandy Lamoro comes back into the front line. You have to sub quickly in rally scoring because you don't get many chances. Flanagan back set crawl. And Kroll is right on the line. Penn State saying it's out, but the linesman saying it was in. 4-4, four, four, game five. Take another look at this hit by Kroll. Nice cross-court hit. Ooh, what do you think, Chris? I think it just caught part of that line. Yeah. That linesman is one of the best in volleyball. Eddie Frierson very rarely makes a bad call, and he had a good angle on it. It was close. Jenny Johnson with the serve. Poked up. Here's Randick out of the back line. Left side, Reimers. Randick with a dig again. UCLA looking for termination, and they get it in the wrong way. Kroll should not be out on the left, but she's getting stuck out there in the blocking formation. 33 hitting errors by UCLA. 5-4, Lady Lions by one. Back set. And a nice play, Flanagan to Krull, who dinked. Yes, there's a dink by Kim Krull, her first <laughs> of the season. And a smart one. She saw that hole. She went right around the block and into the corner. A great play by Krull. Terry Zemitis, we have been told, has a meniscus tear, so she will not be back. It's unfortunate for her. She had back surgery last May. Wait, there it is. Played by injuries, and she's only a freshman. There's another point for Penn State. Salima Davidson to serve. Salima Davidson will serve for Penn State. Here's Buckner. <laughs> Flanagan to Randick, and Randick puts it away. So Allison Randick coming on. Randick gets her 11th kill. She has the highest hitting percentage in the Pac-10. I'd keep the ball at her as much as possible. Of course, in order for UCLA to do that, they have to pass well to run the middle. UCLA is up high. Triple block. Duffing Laura Cook. What a wall by UCLA. Terry Zemitis. Uh, slight meniscus tear. She's got her knee pads back on, and she is loosening up perhaps to come back in. Would Penn State put her back in? Tan going over the top. It's 7-6 to six UCLA. And Kara Milling gets the kill for a point. The teams will now switch sides. There is no timeout as play will continue in game five. Penn State trailing UCLA by two. UCLA 
very, very successful. And Andy Benikowski, Russ Rose. What a matchup it has been. Serving is Flanagan, Ton, and it's dug up by UCLA. 8-6 Bruins. And the shot out of bounds by Ton. 9-6. Now UCLA up by three. And timeout going to Penn State. So we'll take timeout. We're coming back. UCLA is up by three in game five. This holiday season, while you're shopping... Here is where you earn your coaching salary. In his 16th year, Russ Rose. His team trailing by three in game five to perennial powerhouse UCLA. His coaching staff, Aaron Tomlin, Michael Shaw, Leanne King, trying to figure out what to do. What should they do? Well, I would be surprised if Rose cracked a joke in that last timeout. Not unusual for him. Such a lighthearted guy. But the most important thing is for them to sign out right here. And they've got to stop that UCLA momentum. They need to continue to pass well, control the ball, and minimize their errors. A key point for Penn State, because now their defensive specialist, Claudette Otero, is in to serve. Jody Nicewinder is back into the left front. And Penn State in a very good rotation. UCLA by two. Game five. Winner moves on. Pretty good pass. Flanagan sets left. Here comes Buckner. And she puts it away. And that Buckner with only her 14th kill on the night, but a big one there. Well, she hasn't had a great night tonight, but she's definitely a good pressure player. She's been in this position several times in the NCAA finals, so I'd go to her also. UCLA five points away now, and there's a big hit. Laura Cook, the senior from Baltimore, Maryland, the leading kill person, and Davidson set her, and she responded. Cook, the leading kill person, aces and digs for Penn State. Just a great all-around player for them. UCLA by two. And a big hit, Kara Milling. She has been the go-to person for UCLA. Reimer's now back into the front line. She carries with her 21 kills. It's 11-8 UCLA. Ton. And it drops. That ball went up to Istanbul and came back down in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Once again, Ton finds a way to get it through the UCLA block. Nine serving 11. Penn State down by two. Coming over to Johnson. She's blocked. Milling was there. Back to Johnson. And she squeezes it through. Jenny Johnson with 20 kills. Penn State could have used the Midas on that play. They squeaked the ball right around Nicewinder. 12-9 UCLA. Penn State trying to hang in. Left side. UCLA a little nervous. Flanagan on the left. Oh, and it's on the line! Flanagan with the rainbow right on the line. Her first kill of the match. That's a risky shot at a time like this, and Penn State doesn't like that call at all. They thought the ball was out. No Eastern team has ever won an NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. The Penn State men's team did it last year. They came back on UCLA and upset the Bruins. Now, once again, the women of UCLA trying to get the job done on a pesky Penn State squad. Pesky is a perfect word to describe the squad of Penn State. They are such a great defensive, scrappy team. They're not good at terminating the ball. That's not what they're known for. That is what UCLA is known for, but they haven't had a great night hitting-wise. They're hitting in the 100s tonight. Andy Banikowski sends his team back out. The Bruins need just two points. We're in rally scoring, so they can get it on a serve. They can get it on a receive. Jenny Johnson has been the big gun for UCLA. 20 kills. She'll serve it. She's also passed really well tonight. Over the top. Out of bounds. UCLA has scored its 14th point. And now UCLA going to serve it up. They will have five match points. This is number one. Penn State. 
trying to score a point. They go to Rivers, and she responds. Now, once again, this will be a match point. Match point number four. 14 to 10, Lamoureux comes back in. And going out, Otero. Nice winder to serve. A lot of pressure on Nightbird, who didn't expect to play tonight. Match point for UCLA. Johnson, Tan goes and gets it. A free ball. Match point, UCLA. Over to Jenny Johnson. No, it's blocked back. And another match point save by Penn State. Timeout, UCLA. Salima Davidson can do it all for Penn State, and there she comes up with a big block. She does a great job of blocking that right side for Penn State. We'll take one final timeout in this game. Russ Rose's team trailing 14 to 11 here in game five. State College Board Lincoln Mercury. To go home and visit with family and friends. Chris Marlowe, Maria Barnes, Austin, Texas. We are in game fine. Andy Banikowski's team just one point away. Russ Rose's Penn State Lady Lions have withstood two match points. This is the third one. UCLA trying to terminate. And they do! And that's it! UCLA is going to the national championship final. I was sitting here wondering whether or not Flanagan would have the guts to backset the scroll, and she did, and it was successful for UCLA. They terminated the ball in game five. That's exactly what they needed to do. One more look at match point. UCLA struggled with their passing all night long, but they didn't struggle here. Flanagan goes back to Kroll, who had a great night for UCLA. She puts the ball to the floor. We call her the Terminator. She'll either terminate for UCLA or against them, and she ends the match with a great shot. A disappointing finish to a marvelous season by Penn State. Meanwhile, UCLA is going back to the national championship for the first time since 92. We'll be back with the winners after this. Only those with superhuman ability may enter my court.